Hey everyone, so this video is going to be a slightly different format to my usual ones as I'm going to be analysing four of my followers' forehands and giving them some tips that they can put into practice to improve their game. I really like the idea of this format as I'm sure that not only are these tips going to help the four players that have sent me in their videos, but they should help you too. As the things that I've picked up from their forehands are quite common mistakes. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this format. If you enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button and if you want to get involved in future videos with this format let me know in the comments below along with which shot you'd like me to analyze of yours but before I show you the first of the four videos it's important for me to give a little bit of context about what I look for when I'm working with a player to try to improve their game and if you've watched any of my videos before you'll know that technique is one of the last things that I look at as there are some key fundamentals that need to be in place before I get that far and you may have heard me talking about the five R's first I look at the players ready position how athletic do they look and how ready are they to pounce on the ball? Once they're ready, next I look for how well they read the oncoming ball, as this is one of the biggest challenges in tennis, as the ball comes in lots of different trajectories, so your judgment and your anticipation is vital. Once you've read the ball, the next R is how well do you react? This is more about your movement to the oncoming ball. Once you've moved to the ball, the next R is how do you respond to the shot? And this is really based around finding your contact point. Are you in a balanced and stable position to make a good contact at a good distance from your body? And finally, once you've struck the ball, the next R is how well do you recover? And it's only once you're decent at the five R's that I look at technique, as it doesn't matter how good your technique is if you fall down in one of those R's. However, what I will say is, as this video is focused around fixing my followers' forehands, I am going to delve into the technique more than I normally would, as most of these players have something that they could work on within those five R's in the first place. But I know all of you watching are probably keen to look into the technique a little bit as well, so I will include that. So let's check out the first video. The first forehand that we're gonna check out is from Ivan, and I wanna say a big thank you to Ivan and the other three players that sent in videos, as it takes a lot of courage to have your forehand viewed by everybody watching this video so big thanks now when it comes to Ivan's forehand you'll notice that his contact point is very varied and quite often as he's striking the ball he's still on the move and so if we go through the five R's you'll notice that his ready position isn't that athletic one thing that can help with your ready position is to make sure that you're starting with a nice wide base Ivan's quite upright with his feet quite close together ideally you want to be able to fit your racket in between your two feet in your ready position. This gives you a nice wide and low base, giving you the ability to change direction quickly and feel a lot more balanced when you're moving onto that oncoming ball. So that's a very quick and simple tip. Once you're looking more athletic and ready, the next R is to improve your reading skills. And this isn't easy as this takes time and lots and lots of repetitions. But the key is to try to spend lots of time on court, hitting with different players of different game styles and on different surfaces, as this is where you really learn about the flight path of the oncoming ball. But one drill that I really, really like to use, you can do this with a hitting partner at the other end, it's called the one, two, three bounce. Now for this drill, you need a partner that's willing to help you out a little bit, as they're gonna feed you some balls, and as they feed the ball, they're gonna shout out the number one, two, or three. If they shout out the number one, you've gotta hit your forehand after one bounce. If they shout out two, you've got to space yourself so that the ball bounces twice before you hit it. And if they shout three, you've got to give yourself even more space because you've got to get that ball to bounce three times before you strike the ball. This is much, much tougher than it sounds. But by doing this, you really improve your anticipation and your reaction speed as you've got to track that oncoming ball really quickly to give yourself the right amount of space. Once you've done this exercise a number of times, you'll soon feel that one bounce is a doddle. Are you trying to be in my video, Barnaby? Come on then. <laughs> right, sorry folks, Barnaby wants to be in the video. You've got to stand over here, dude. Come and stand over here. Look at the camera. What do you want to say to the camera? You say hello to everybody. Hello, make sure you subscribe. Cheers, buddy. How's your tennis going? Good. Hitting some big forehands? Good man, I want to see it. Go, 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 go. <laughs> okay, so. Barnaby, Barnaby started something here. Um, what do you have to say to the viewers, folks? Subscribe. 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 <laughs> there you go, you're in it. Unsubscribe. Yeah. Oi. And you Don't unsubscribe. I've got to tag you, have I? OK. 
okay. But Ivan, one quick mindset shift that will really help you to improve your tennis without having to do any drills is called beat the bounce. Your priority anytime you play tennis is to prepare your racket and your footwork before the ball bounces on your side of the court. This is gonna give you much more time on your shot. It's gonna give you much more stability and balance and so that you're not still moving as you strike the ball. And this tip is not only gonna help you, but pretty much every single player that I know. So the next forehand comes from Thomas and you'll see when you see Thomas's forehand that he does a really, really good job at preparing his racket and his feet before the ball bounces on his side of the court. One thing I love about his forehand is how well he prepares using his non-dominant hand here. This is also really good to create space between your body and your contact point. What helps with this is Thomas seems to read the ball really well. It does make it slightly easier as he's playing with a ball machine, but you can see that he does a really good job at spacing himself away from the ball. But one thing you could work on Thomas is your recovery, as you'll notice that you move much quicker towards the ball than you do on your way back. But it's important to remember that your recovery is a vital part of the shot, as if you don't recover quickly, you're gonna be late to the next ball. Again, this might be because you're using a ball machine. I do find that sometimes using a ball machine can make you lazy in some ways. So just be aware of that and make sure that you keep your normal intensity even when you're using that ball machine. When it comes to a technical teaching point for Thomas, you can see that he's hitting his forehand inside out into the opposite corner of the court. And ideally, whenever you're hitting a ball into a certain position, you want your body weight traveling in that direction when possible. However, sometimes Thomas's back leg actually over rotates and finishes a little bit too far in front of his body. This not only makes it difficult to recover, but it also sometimes will drag the ball into the center of the court as opposed to hitting that backhand corner that he's aiming for. And so ideally you want that back leg to finish slightly more out the side of your body as this is gonna help you to control that ball, prevent the dragging, but also give you a better opportunity to make that crossover step and recover effectively. I would say though that the rotation itself is brilliant and we don't want to lose that rotation, but just try to limit how much that back leg comes through. There is just one more technical point that links all four of these players together, which I'll cover at the end as it's quite a common mistake. But next up, let's check out Santiago's forehand. One thing you'll notice when watching Santiago playing is his movement looks effortless and natural. He's very bouncy and always on his toes, which is a great asset as a tennis player. But one thing I would say is sometimes this footwork can look a little bit too casual. He tends to like to sit back quite far behind the baseline and let the ball come to him, which is fine if you're a defensive player or a counterpunch player. But even so, when you have the opportunity on a more neutral ball, you really want to step in and make the most of that opportunity. Whereas generally you can see here that Santiago likes to sit back and sometimes play off the back foot as opposed to transferring that body weight forwards through the shot. Now, if we go through the five R's, you can see that Santiago looks pretty ready. He does read the ball pretty well. He looks like he has the ability to react really quickly, but because he's so comfortable being that far behind the baseline, he doesn't really, he kind of sits back and waits for the ball. And so that's the area where we really want to work on. It may just be because he was in rally mode and just being kind to his opponent at the other end, but even so, when you're in practice mode, you still want to practice the things that you're gonna to want to do in a tennis match. And so my challenge to you, Santiago, is to try to practice taking shots earlier when you have the opportunity. And anytime you can, you want to make sure that you're getting body weight transfer going forward so that your back leg finishes slightly in front of your front leg. You actually do this really, really well on this shot. And I challenge you to do this more often. And even on those shots that you're hitting with an open stance, which I can see that you like, you can still try to get that body weight transfer going forwards as you strike the ball. Last but definitely not least is Kubi. Big thanks for sending in this video of your four hands. Now you can see again that Kubi is a really great mover on the court. He's bouncy, he's springy, he looks alert and ready for the oncoming ball. Generally, he reads the ball pretty well, but there are occasions where the ball gets a little bit too close and other occasions where he's a little bit too far from his contact. And so rather than using your hand skills to adapt to those different contact points, try to use your movement to create the right spacing every time to be in the most comfortable position. This is gonna give you more options to hit the ball more effectively and also into different parts of the court. Now for a player at Kubi's level, rather than just focusing on the flight of the ball and playing in a very reactive way, 
way. We want to be playing in a more proactive way. And what this means is rather than just looking at the ball, we need to be looking at our opponent at the other end. We need to see what their court position looks like, how much pressure they're under, and how they're preparing their racket, as these things can give you big signals as to what their shot's gonna travel back to you like. Examples of this are if your opponent's under lots of pressure, you can probably anticipate a safer, more floaty ball. So maybe stepping in is a good idea. If you sent the ball and your opponent looks super comfortable and they're winding up with a really big backswing, you could probably anticipate that ball's gonna come much faster. So stepping back might be a good idea. But by being more aware of how your opponent's likely to hit the ball is really gonna help you with your anticipation, giving you a head start and really sharpening your ability to get yourself into the right position for each shot. By making a small improvement to your reading and anticipation skills, it's gonna make a huge difference to your consistency and your accuracy. Accuracy. But I did say that there was one technical point that I was going to mention that all of the players do in a slightly different way and it's with regards to the non-dominant hand. Now as I mentioned a few of the players do a really good job at preparing their forehand using their non-dominant hand. This is great as it helps your upper body to coil into this unit turn position. But the point that I'm going to talk about is actually how the arm finishes. As you'll notice that Santiago tucks his arm into his body like so you'll notice that Thomas has a more straight arm pulling away from his body. And you'll notice that Kubi has his elbow down low, as does Ivan, kind of hanging by his side. Now, your non-dominant hand plays a huge part in your forehand as it's a bit of a counterbalance to your hitting arm, but it also really helps you when it comes to developing racket head speed. You'll notice that pro tennis players most of the time tuck their non-dominant hand into their body as they're driving towards the ball. By bringing their arm into their body, it can help with developing that racket speed. If you think of a figure skater doing a really fast spin, they'll bring their arms in to increase the speed in which they spin. And when they want to slow down, they take their arms out as that slows that spin down. It's the same with the forehand. You'll notice pro tennis players tuck their arm in to help to whip through the ball. But the key is that it's not just acting as a dead weight or hindering your rotation, but actually helping it. All four players could make a small adjustment to their non-dominant arm or hand position to make it more efficient. Ivan, Santiago and Kubi could do with keeping their non-dominant arm slightly higher. This will help them to complete their uncoiling in a more controlled manner. By aiming to catch the racket in your offhand at the end of your swing, it will help you to complete your swing more effectively. You can see Roger Federer doing this well here. And for Thomas, it's slightly different as he keeps his non-dominant hand up pretty well most of the time. But sometimes that straight arm can cause over rotation. By tucking in or catching the racket at the end of your swing, you'll feel a lot more control. And so, as I mentioned at the start of the video, that technical point that I just mentioned is the least important important thing out of all of the things that I've mentioned as those five R's are vital to playing better tennis and to winning more matches. But big thanks again to all four of you for sending in your videos and for the rest of you watching I hope you enjoyed it and got something from it and again let me know if you want to be involved in any future videos like this. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.